carrying on my uh, moles topic and last video I explained how to deal with empirical formula uh, and moles calculations I want to deal with water of crystallization moles calculations in this video and there is a similarity in the way that we attempt these and I want you to do them in the form of a table. Watch my previous video on empirical formula. That I urge you to do in the form of a table and this I'm going to urge you to do in the form of a table but as always let's understand what water of crystallization is before we get going and lots of you will have made I know copper sulfate crystals and if you've got copper sulfate which is a blue solution and you cool it down sometimes you get crystals or you leave it to stand over a few days you get crystals what happens there is the copper and the sulfate ions come together to make the crystals and water gets trapped in between the positive and negatives coming together water gets trapped inside that crystal lattice structure as it's forming that's water of crystallization now I can witter on about it and i will um i'm going to go through various ideas systematically so you understand them but i hope you understand what it is it's not water that makes the crystals wet the crystals are not wet you can have perfectly dry crystals yet the water of crystallization will be inside the crystals um, and it's locked in and when you've got water of crystallization locked in then we call it we call those crystals we call them hydrated they are hydrated crystals and without this water of hydration we call them anhydrous. Some ionic compounds have water trapped within their crystals. I'm just going to run through the points. The water is trapped within their three-dimensional lattice of positive and negative ions. And the trapped water is what we know as water of crystallization. The water does not make the crystals wet. The water can be released if we heat the chemical very strongly, then that water of crystallization can be driven off. When the water's there inside the crystals, we say the crystals are hydrated. And when we drive off the water of crystallization, there's no water of crystallization, then we say the Ionic crystals are anhydrous. So two words, hydrated and anhydrous. Hydrated means with water. Anhydrous means without water. Hydrated and anhydrous. Don't use the, don't get into the business of using hydrated and dehydrated. No, use hydrated and anhydrous. There, in red, hydrated and anhydrous. The most famous of these hydrated crystals is blue copper sulfate. The most famous example is blue hydrated copper sulfate solid or crystals. The formula, the formula is CuSO4, that's copper sulfate, dot 5H2O. It's that dot and then 5H2O is the water. It tells you the for every one copper sulfate, that's CuSO4, for every one mole of copper sulfate, you've got five moles of water trapped inside. It gives you the ratio. It gives you the chemical, copper sulfate, and then the dot tells you how many, by ratio, moles of water is trapped per one mole of chemical that you've got. So per one mole of copper sulfate, we've got five moles of water trapped in blue copper sulfate powder, showing that for every one mole of copper sulfate, we have five moles 
of trapped water. When the blue copper sulfate is heated strongly, then you can drive off the water. It comes off as steam. You can see it or you can collect droplets of it. I'll show you a, a, a diagram in a minute. And I am thinking, I'm not in school at the moment, but I am thinking when I get back in school, I'll, I'll record a video where I do that. And you can see it coming off as I do it. But you need to understand that if we start with blue crystals and I heat it strongly and I drive off the water of crystallization, then when I've driven off the water of crystallization, the copper sulfate will become white. It will not remain blue. It's only blue when you've got the combination of water and copper ions. Copper ions and water together are responsible for the blue colour of blue copper sulphate. So if you drive off the water, there's no water, just copper ions and just sulphate ions. That's not blue, that's white. And that's why we see it go from blue, we see it go to white. And I've just annotated the bottom here to make it stand out a bit more. Copper ions with water together is then needed to give you that blue colour. Now, diagram. I've nicked this off the internet and it seemed like I've never angled the test tube down but I might well do it in my video that I attach to the end of this um, where I try and show you this. So blue copper sulfate. I can get blue copper sulfate powder, put it in a boiling tube. I can tip the boiling tube down a bit and hope that the powder stays up here and doesn't fall out. I can heat, heat it, and the water will be driven off. The further down the tube, it's colder. And it, as the steam goes further down the tube, there'll be a cooling effect, and drops of water will fall out of the end. Or steam will be seen exiting the end of the boiling tube. I've tried to summarise what happens in my own handwriting here. Blue hydrated copper 2 sulfate, which is solid, which are, that's that stuff. I'll call it hydrated. I want you to call it hydrated when it's got water. If you heat it, if you heat it strongly, you see I've got a double sided arrow. I'll come back and I'll explain that. But that way, if you heat it, you make this go that way. This is copper sulfate dot 5H2O. Copper sulfate, don't fire it, so solid, that is blue. You heat it, it turns, turns white. White, anhydrous, anhydrous, copper 2 sulfate. Look, the formula, CuSO4, solid. There is no dot 5H2O. The 5H2O has been driven off. The 5H2O has been separated. The 5H2O comes off as steam. The 5H2O may drop down as droplets. It's no longer in the copper sulfate. That's what makes the copper sulfate without water anhydrous. And reversible arrow. Why if I put water, why if, why if I put some drops of water with the white anhydrous? copper sulfate well then you can make that reaction go that way you can make it go backwards and the white anhydrous copper sulfate believe it or not will turn blue again because the water with copper ions it goes blue and this we've used as a test we've used it as a test testing for the presence of water i've mentioned it in some previous videos of mine if you think you've got water, put it with white, put it with white anhydrous copper sulfate. And if it's water, or there's a little bit of water, then you'll see some blueiness. The water and the copper ions definitely give you a bluey colour. And if you don't see a bluey colour, then it's not water. There's no water present. Really nice test. It tests for the presence of water. Now the water can be murky, dirty, impure, 10% water, 
doesn't matter. So long as there's some water, you'll see some blue colour. So this is a test. The backward reaction, starting with white anhydrous copper sulfate, add water, and it definitely goes blue. Now, what kind of calculations do we get? Well, I'm going to move on to calculations, and that's what the moles topic is about. And I want to follow the method. I want you to do it like a table, just like my previous video on empirical formula. If you do it in the form of a table, I've got three columns here, but it's really only these two columns that we follow through to get to the answer. And I want one column to be the, to be the anhydrous chemical, the anhydrous chemical there. I'm going to follow that through. And then the water that's present, follow that through. Together, the chemical and the water together makes the hydrated chemical. Um, so, copper sulfate example I've been talking about, the ionic compound would be CuSO4, the water would be H2O, and the hydrated would be CuSO4 dot 5 H2O. So, calculation must be done in the form of a table. It is the ratio of ionic compound to how many moles of water per per one mole of ionic compound. That's what we're trying to get at. Quite often they ask you to work out how many moles of water are present within the crystals. And you're going to have to do it by taking the crystals, the hydrated, they've got the water in. Heat them really strongly using a roaring bunch of burner flame. Drive off the water. And the mass goes down. And then you weigh it. And your mass is down. You heat it again a second time. You re-weigh it. If the mass goes down, then you, you are still driving off water. And you heat it again. And you weigh it. And if it goes down, you heat it again, and you weigh it. You heat it again, and you weigh it. You heat it again, and you weigh it. Until you heat it, you weigh it, and it weighs the same. If it weighs the same, we call it constant mass. So you heat hydrated crystals over and over and over again and keep weighing them until they are constant mass. When the mass doesn't get any lighter, then... All the water of crystallization has been driven off. And when all the water's gone, then you know what mass is the anhydrous. And the reduction, the decrease in mass is the water. And you follow that through in terms of writing the masses in. And how do you turn masses into moles? Well, you've got to divide by relative molecular masses and having got the division done you'll end up with some decimal numbers perhaps and we want whole number ratios so you divide by the smallest um, divide by the number of no sorry no. with the empirical formula we did the smallest but here we're trying to get the anhydrous this column we're trying to get that to one mole and all we do is you, you divide by the number of moles you've got here. If you divide by the number of moles you've got there, then this, this box will be the number one. The water, you've got to do the same manipulation with the water. I'll do an example in a minute. When you do the same manipulation with the water, you've got to divide by the same numbers to preserve the ratio. You have to divide by the same numbers. And then whatever number we get, that is your x. H2O. So we get the compound with dot X. Lots of water. Let's do an example. In an experiment to determine the formula of hydrated magnesium bromide, 7.3 grams of hydrate were heated to constant mass and 4.6 grams of the anhydrous salt remained. Calculate the mass of the water lost. Hence, the value of X and the formula magnesium bromide dot XH2O. They want you to work out the X. 
typical problem. So, I have here worked out the relative molecular mass of magnesium bromide, 24 plus 80, 80, 184. The molecular mass of water, 1 and 1 and 16 is 18. And then I've got, you're told, 7.3 grams of the hydrate. Now, the hydrate is hydrated, um, hydrated magnesium bromide. So it's hydrated magnesium bromide. And you heat it. And to constant mass, you drive off the water. And you're left with 4.6 grams. So 4.6 grams is your magnesium bromide bit. The reduction in the mass is water. So the water is 2.7 grams. Water, 2.7 grams. The chemical, 4.6 grams. Turn that into moles, divide by the 184, divide by 18 to get moles of water. So this is moles of the chemical, moles of water, 0 0.025, 0 0.0, sorry, not 0, 0 0.15 moles of water. Divide by the chemical. We want the chemical to be one mole. So the moles of chemical was 0 0.025. Divide that by 0 0.025, you get the number 1. But if you divide that by 0 0.025, don't forget, you have to divide this side by 0 0.025 to preserve the ratios of chemical to water of crystallization, the ratios to preserve them. If you divide this by any number, you've got to divide that by any number. And if you divide this by 0 0.025, you divide that by 0 0.025. And when you do so, you get the number 6. So the number here is 1, the number there is 6, MGBR, 6H2O, X is 6, formula is MGBR2 dot 6H2O. So, table. Do it in the form of a table. Similar to the empirical formula calculation. It just makes the whole thing very simple. Pupils find empirical form of calculations, water crystallization calculations, they find them difficult. And the reason they find them difficult is they don't, have, they don't approach them in these uh, table terms. So learn the headings. If you want the headings, they're there. Pause the video. Learn the headings. Having learned the headings, learn the method. Do some examples. The more examples you do, the more successful you'll be. So get get working and do some of those now there's some other ideas i want to cover just to make sure that you know all the key ideas heat into constant mass heat into constant mass is this idea about heat it and weigh it 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 until the weight doesn't go down anymore that's constant mass that ensures you've only got the chemical with no water present but if you took the first weighing, you'll know how much water was lost. And often that is the data that they give you. By adding water, anhydrous crystals can be turned into hydrated ones. Hydrated crystals refers to when the crystals have got their water of crystallization. Using white anhydrous copper sulfate solid, it will turn blue if water is present. So, that is used as a test for water. When the crystals are made in an aqueous water solution from dissolved solution, then when the crystals form, this water gets trapped in the crystals. Okay. So, that's it. I think they're the moles types of calculations that you get a GCSE to conclude the moles topic.